Hello everyone! I hope you're all having an excellent Sunday, we are back at the Capablanca Saga and this is round 4 of the 1914 Tournament of St. Petersburg. Uh, it's Jose Rul Capablanca vs World Champion Emmanuel Lasker. This is the first game they ever played and it's quite uh, an amazing game, I'm sure you'll enjoy it. Uh, if uh, you know, if you, YouTube wasn't so rigorous about copyrights, I might even play some uh, epic music to get us all in the mood. Uh, but uh, as, as it is, uh, I'm not going to do that, but you know, uh, you are welcome to check out some uh, nice epic music and then come back to watch this game. Uh, I will also include uh, a link in the description below to some uh, epic music if you would uh, like to do so. Uh, it's the first one I found, so uh, I do hope you enjoyed that as well. Uh, and also, we have a very nice photo of Capablanca playing against Lasker. There you have it here. Not sure from which game this is or even from which year. Uh, maybe you maybe you can make out what's happening on the board. It's oh, Everything's a bit blurry, but, you know, your eyes might be better than mine. Uh, so, you know, if you manage to find out from which game this is, or maybe it's not even a game, maybe it's an analysis after the game. Uh, but still, you know, do share with everyone. I will uh, make sure everyone sees your comment. Uh, now, getting back to this game, uh, like I said, uh, round four, uh, let's dive straight into it. Capablanca has the white pieces and he opens with e4. Uh, we have e5 by world champion Emmanuel Lasker, knight to f3, knight to c6, and now knight to c3 by Capablanca. The three knights opening and knight to f6. Uh, the four knights opening. We have bishop to b5, uh, bishop to b4 now, uh, the double Spanish variation or so-called. Uh, we have castles by Capablanca, castles by Lasker, and now d3 and d6. And as you can see, uh, it's a perfectly symmetrical variation. And as you all know, when you when your opponent plays a, a symmetrical variation against you like this, uh, it's always uh, gonna uh, blow up somewhere. So if white just keeps making moves and black just keeps repeating the moves white is making, uh, black will eventually lose the game. Uh, here Capablanca goes bishop g5. And here is already such a, such a moment. If Lasker would continue playing symmetrically with bishop to g4, then bishop captures on f6 would win Capablanca the game. Uh, now, uh, uh, your queen is under attack, you don't have time to, to capture an f3. I mean, you do, but uh, white will uh, ha have a better position afterwards. So here you will be forced to capture with the g-pawn and mess up your pawn structure. Because if you capture with the queen, seems like everything is fine for black, but knight d5 now wins the game. Your queen is under attack, uh, you have to move the queen. Also, you're threatening knight captures on c7. But most importantly, after the queen moves, you're threatening uh, bishop captures. You remove the defender of the bishop on b4, captures, and white is just up a piece. So Lasker, no longer able to continue this symmetrical play, goes for uh, bishop captures on c3. We have b captures on c3 and now h6. Uh, forcing Capablanca to decide what to do with the bishop. Bishop goes back to h4 and only now the bishop comes to g4, pinning Capablanca's knight on f3. It's not that big of a deal, knight d4 isn't even an idea as uh, Lasker already exchanged on, uh, on c3 and now Capablanca's pawn is very useful there. Uh, we have h3 by Capablanca, bishop captures on f3, queen captures on f3 and now g5. Uh, the bishop has to go to g3 and uh, it's very interesting. Uh, I will mention uh, this after the game. Capablanca does not mention this game in any of his books. It's interesting because it's his first game that he ever played against world champion Emmanuel Lasker. And, uh, you know, um, during uh, <laughs> the negotiations between them about the World Chess Championship match didn't really go to all that well. As far as Lasker is concerned, uh, he's not even going to play against Capablanca. He agreed to play against Rubinstein for the World Chess Championship title. So, uh, you know. Not uh, not all that surprised, but still, it's it's very strange. But we'll get back to that. But it's interesting. There is one book about the 1914 tournament in Saint Petersburg. It's a book uh, wrote by, uh, written by Zigbert Tarash, Doctor Zigbert Tarash. I or I actually ordered this book some time ago, but it still didn't uh, didn't arrive. So uh, sorry, we're not going to be using all that much of uh, Tarash's insight about this tournament. But uh, there are bits and pieces of the book everywhere, you know, online. So we, we will include some things. Uh, such uh, an example is here. In this position, uh, Zygbert Tarash had this pos exact position with the black pieces against David Janowski in the, in the famous 1898 tournament in Vienna. It's one of the longest tournaments ever played. Uh, 36 rounds uh, <laughs> were played and after that uh, Zygbert Tarash and Harry Nelson Pillsbury were tied for first place uh, and then they had to go into tie breaks and in the end uh, Tarash won this uh, amazing tournament with like 31 out of 40 points. Uh, I, I, one point ahead of Harry Nelson Pillsbury who had 30 out of 40. Uh, but uh, Tarash actually wrote uh, 
that uh, in this, uh, as he covers this book in a uh, game in his book, he said that uh, he had this position against Janowski with the black pieces, and that here he played knight to h7, and Janowski won a brilliant game against him. Even though uh, he lost that game to Janowski, he still won the tournament. Uh, but here, Lasker goes for knight to d7. So here, it's not uh, uh, the same game as. Uh, uh, Janowski played against Tarash, and now it's a completely new game, uh, but it's still a very difficult position for uh, for Black to defend, uh, so Tarash says. Uh, we have d4 by Capablanca, now comes f6, and here queen to g4, threatening queen to e6 check. Uh, we have king to h8, making room for the rook on the g-file, and now comes h4. Uh, so what do you do here? Rook to f7. Uh, Lasker knows that he will have to defend at some point along the h-file. Uh, for example, knight to f8, uh, followed by rook to h7, will be a very nice defensive resource. And here, Tarash men mentions in his book, uh, Capablanca played h captures on g5, saying that uh, before doing this, maybe you should go f3, play king f2, you know, double rooks along the h file, and only then capture here, because it's oh, it's pretty much never good for black to capture on h4. Uh, but uh, the engine actually likes Capablanca's h captures on g5, it says it's, it's perfectly all right, you can double up on the h file next. Uh, so, you know, Take that, Dr. Zygbert Tarash. Uh, H captures on g5, and now comes f3. Capablanca plays this f3 move, he strengthens the center, and now prepares king to f2, and now the rooks are coming to the h file, and you can see that the Lasker's king is very uncomfortable there. Uh, knight to f8, strengthening the h7 square, so the rook can come and help out with the defense. King to f2, and now comes rook to h7. Uh, already a, a preemptive strike along the h file. Rook to h1 by Capablanca, and now queen to e7, increasing uh, the, the defense here. Uh, we have a queen to f5, now again, Capablanca increases the pressure along the f, uh, the, that h7 square. Uh, rook to d8, now the other rook is coming to help out as well, and now comes rook captures on h7 by Capablanca. Knight captures on h7, and now comes rook to h1. So, very nice pressure uh, along this... Uh, uh, file, you, you can see that it's never possible for Lasker to move this king, uh, because then something like rook or queen captures on h7 would be a terrible threat. Uh, here, king to g8 by Lasker. He wants to now uh, even further increase his defense along the h7 square, and maybe play something like rook g7, and then try to hide the king uh, al along the back rank. Uh, and here Capablanca played bishop captures on c6. And this is something that, uh, as you can see, Tarash mentions in his book. He says, it seems that deep broad plans are not the Cuban strength. He knows how to combine, but not how to compose. Uh, here uh, Tarash mentions that... Um, Okay, this bishop currently isn't do doing all that much uh, on b5, but you should somehow introduce it into the game, not trade it here, uh, and uh, as your dark square bishop will be much harder to introduce into this attack, you should play something like bishop to c4, or maybe d5, force the knight back, and then go knight, uh, bishop d7, and then bishop to e6 to attack the rook here, or just bishop to c4 straight out. Then after the rook moves, then you can go something like king to e3, make uh, the room for the bishop on f2, and after queen to f8, now go bishop f2, and after knight e7, attacking the queen, queen to h3. And now black is fairly tied down, you can go something like uh, bishop f5, uh, bishop e6, if the knight moves, you can even put it to f5 to even further increase the pressure along the h7 square, uh, but uh, all in all, just, you know, keeping the tension. But here, Capablanca played bishop captures on c6. He has a different plan. He wants to create weaknesses on the uh, queen side and then hopefully win some, win some material there. Uh, we have b captures on c6, and now Capablanca uh, leaves this tension along the h file. He goes rook to b1. Uh, his idea is now to make this a very nice rook lift and uh, create some threads there. Uh, but this allows Lasker to introduce his king uh, to, to some safety of the back rank. Uh, because here, uh, before doing such a thing, Capablanca should have uh, left everything, uh, you know, as it is. This way, this is never playable, then the knight is just lost. Uh, you can't really allow the rook to move, then you allow the queen to infiltrate even further. Uh, if if the rook moves somewhere like g7, then you can go for queen to c8 check and infiltrate this way. Uh, so first, you uh, perhaps Capablanca should have just left everything as it is, Tarash says, and maybe just go king e2, king d3, uh, get to the king as close as possible to the queen side weaknesses, and then if uh, Lasker will want to untangle, get back into the game, then Capablanca can trade down further and play a more favorable endgame. Uh, but Capablanca had a different plan. Rook to b1, 
Uh, now king to g7, the king can finally move, rook to b7, and now comes rook to a8, now defending the a7 pawn. Uh, king to g1 by Capablanca, we have knight to f8, uh, now as you can see Lasker's knight is perfectly controlling all of the squares that the white queen could use to infiltrate, uh, you know, the upper half of the board. Uh, we have d5 and now c5, Lasker is not interested in allowing this bishop any uh, play on the queen side. Uh, bishop, sorry, bishop to f2 and now uh, we have uh, queen to d8. If you tried something, uh, you don't really have any other moves uh, for black other than queen to d8 and it's a, it's an excellent plan for Lasker. Uh, knight h7, you're just gonna have it there for no reason and like we said, the knight is very nicely placed here. So queen d8 and here Lasker's plan is just amazing. Uh, Capablanca plays g3, improves the position on the king side, and now comes rook to b8. Uh, now uh, Lasker offers the a7 pawn in order to win the b file. And indeed, if Capablanca would capture on a7, uh, this would pretty much be the end of Capablanca, because rook b1 check would be met with king to g2, and now comes queen to b8, still controlling the c7 pawn, but forcing the rook to move. Once the rook moves, now comes rook to a1. And uh, now, it, all of a sudden, it's Lasker who is on the attack. Queen b1 followed by queen to h1 could be a very quick checkmate. So here you would have to go something like bishop to e3, uh, queen b1, king to h3, run away with the king, queen to h1 check, king g4, but now queen to h6. And now there would be, uh, you know, no proper defense against rook h1 and queen to h3 checkmate. You would have to give up some material here, bishop captures, 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 and Lasker would just go into this endgame being up a piece. So not something Capablanca wants to do. So Capablanca says, okay, we're tr we're gonna trade, but on b3, I wanna fix my pawn structure on the queen side. Uh, we have rook captures on b3, c captures on b3, and now queen to d7. Now it's actually Lasker who offers uh, a trade of queens, and now Lasker wants to go into the endgame. Finally, Capablanca gets his endgame. We have queen captures on d7, knight captures on d7, and now king to f1, bringing his king all the way uh, to the queen side, if possible. It would be very nice. Uh, but uh, now uh, the material is equal, Lasker has a knight against the bishop, but so far Capablanca's bishop isn't all that great. So Capablanca has to do something about that. We have king g6, the g5 pawn will be somewhat of a weakness, uh, as it is on a dark square, and Lasker wants to break through with f5. So king g6, a very nice move. We have king to e2, Capablanca also improves the position of the king, and now f5. Uh, Capablanca doesn't want to allow the king here, so first g4, now threatening to capture on f5, f captures on e4, f captures on e4, and now knight to f6. The pawns are on light squares, so Capablanca cannot defend them with the dark square bishop, uh, king to f3, only move. Uh, king back to f7, and now comes bishop to e3, attacking the g5 pawn. And here, uh, Lasker can't really hope for maintaining a draw by playing king g6 and repeating moves, just uh, keeping an eye on this pawn, uh, because now a4, now Capablanca starts playing on the queen side. For example, we could show uh, uh, how this ends up, for example, a6, b4, now knight d7, and now a5. And here, after king to f6, you could go king e2, and now uh, black doesn't really have all that many moves. White just gonna play king d3, king c4, and capture here. There's not much black can do here. Let's say you just repeat moves as there's no active plan for black. Even if you go for this pawn, doesn't really matter. King c4, knight captures, but now you just play b5. Uh, captures, captures, you've created a pass pawn and you really don't care about anything else. Even you can give up the c3 pawn with check. King goes to c6 and now this pawn is queening, there's not much you can do. Uh, knight here, you can even allow this, a7, and now after whatever black plays you will go king captures and now it's all over. Knight here and the knight is, is trapped and you will queen the a7 pawn. So Lasker cannot afford uh, a passive defense, he has to play actively. He goes knight to h7. I know it sounds funny when I say Lasker has to play actively and then knight to h7 just to defend the g5 pawn, but it is as it is. Uh, and Capablanca starts pushing on the queen side. We have b4. Uh, c captures on b4. Uh, c captures on b4 and now a6, not allowing the bishop to capture on a7. We have a4. Uh, king to e7, a very important move. The king has to be as close as possible to the queen side. Uh, we have b5 now. Uh, starting to push here, 
and now comes a captures on b5. And now uh, it's a question, do you want to start pushing this pawn or do you want to capture on b5? Now if you can push without capturing, uh, your pawn would be a pass pawn, which is an excellent thing, uh, but would it be possible? Uh, well, it's uh, easy to see that maybe for some of you who are new to chess, uh, maybe you haven't heard about the square of the pawn. Uh, this is the square of the pawn, and if black's king can enter the square of the pawn, uh, for example via king uh, here or king here, uh, then the king will be able to stop the pawn. If not, then the pawn will promote faster than the king can stop it. Uh, we could show such a line, for example, if f a5, king d8, now comes a6, king here, a7, king b7, and now, of course, you will uh, prevent white from having a queen. Uh, but yeah, it's, uh, it's a thing, the square of the pawn, you know, check it out, you will uh, save a lot of calculation, you don't have to calculate, I go here, he goes there, I go here, he goes there, just if, if the king is able to enter the square of the pawn, uh, you will be able to, uh, to do it. Uh, so Capablanca decides to capture on b5. We have a captures on b5 and now king to d7. Couple, uh, Lasker wants to get as close as possible. We have bishop to f2 and now comes king to c8. Uh, bishop to e3 now, king to d7. And here Capablanca is without uh, without any, any further plans. Uh, he has to... Uh, th this bishop doesn't really have an active idea as the king will always be protecting the c7 pawn and the knight is just well, poorly placed on h7, but actually doing a perfect job guarding that g5 pawn. So there are no way, there's no way to break through here. And if you try something like getting your king all the way here, Lasker will just block your king with his king, and again, you will not have anything to show for. So here, uh, they, did not, they did not agree for a draw immediately. First, they played bishop back to f2, king back to c8, uh, we have bishop e3, king d7, bishop f2, king c8, bishop e3, king d7, sort of a six-fold repetition, but yeah, it was in this position on move uh, 49 that uh, Jose Ruel Capablanca and world champion Emmanuel Lasker agreed to a draw. Uh, so yeah, uh, a, wonderful, a wonderful game where Capablanca really had the world champion, you know, uh, on the ropes, so to say, uh, but uh, it was just a, a position that uh, he, he misplayed it a few times and uh, in the end, uh, it was not enough to take down the world champion as Lasker was very resourceful. Uh, first, not capturing here, but going for that bishop to c4 idea would have been better. Uh, and then later, maybe that rook to b1 idea here uh, was a bit pre premature. Better leave this here, you know, black, black doesn't really have any moves. Just first improve the position of your king, play bishop to f2, all the useful moves that you would have played, and only then uh, go into that. So may maybe it would have made a difference, maybe not. Lasker was <laughs> very resource resourceful, so who knows. Uh, but yeah, after king to d7, they agreed to a draw, and this is how the first encounter between Capablanca and Lasker went. So yeah, uh, that's round four of the 1914 tournament in St. Petersburg. I do hope you enjoyed it and that you're enjoying the Capablanca saga so far. Like I mentioned, Capablanca, Capablanca did not include this, uh, this game in any of his books, which is very strange. How do you not include your first, uh, you know, a brawl uh, against the world champion in, in any of your books? Perhaps he was not too, too proud, of, proud of it, but still, I, I thought he, he would include it. Uh, but yeah, uh, like I said, uh, before, the, be before the tournament even started, Capablanca said that he was not feeling all that great and, you know, that he gives uh, either Lasker or Rubinstein, uh, the, you know, uh, as favorites of this tournament. But, uh, yeah, I mean, he, he really played an excellent game here and uh, too, too bad for, for, her, uh, for the Cuban hero for not taking down the, uh, uh, Emmanuel Lasker. Uh, but, yeah, uh, that's just how strong Lasker was. He, he was always resourceful and he always played it, uh, you know, uh, against not against the board but always against the player so here he he wanted complications he wanted to keep everything on the board because he knew that if for example he just traded down and went into the end game from from the beginning that uh, Capablanca would have the upper hand so I, I, I I'd say Lasker is the winner in this game uh, uh, it, it will be some time before Capablanca will will be able to do something about that. Uh, but yeah, okay, uh, I, like I said, I do hope you enjoyed it. I would like to thank uh, Peter Knorich, uh, Chris Picard, Jeff Graves, Damit Plitvarez, and Bernd Henriks for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot, I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check to all my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon, uh, hopefully with some more interesting content. And yeah... Uh, most likely continuing the Capablanca saga, but we'll see how it goes. Uh, thank you all and have an excellent rest of your Sunday.